Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I pray for Madame Fall. In this video, we will be looking at indices, thirds, and logarithms. So let's begin with indices. There are some laws of indices that we must know. For example, a raised to the power of n times a raised to the power of n is equal to a raised to the power of n plus m. The next one, a raised to the power of n in parentheses raised to the power of m is equal to a raised to the power of n times m. For division, a raised to the power of n divided by a raised to the power of m is equal to a raised to the power of n minus m. Next, a raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. n root of a raised to the power of m is equal to a raised to the power of m over n. Our next one, a raised to the power of negative n is the same thing as 1 over a raised to the n. In order to add two indices, they must be the same base and same power. So a raised to the power of n cannot be added to a raised to the power of m or a raised to the power of n can't be added to b raised to the power of n. And same thing goes for subtraction. They must be the same base. So say I add a raised to the power of n plus a raised to the power of n. My answer would be 2a raised to the power of n. Say we are given 2x cubed and we are to multiply it by 3x squared. From the rules of indices, you would add the power. Once it has the same base, you add the power. Now you might be saying this doesn't have the same base, but it does. X is the base and 3 and 2, they are coefficients of the base. So since they have the same base, we multiply the coefficients. So we would have 6 and then we write back the base X raised to the power of 3 plus 2 which would be equal to 6x raised to the power of 5. 3x squared times 4xy. So here is the same as here, where x are base, and there's an imaginary one here for this x, and the 3 and the 4 are coefficients. In this case, the y is treated as a coefficient of the base. So what we would do, we'd multiply the coefficient, so we would have 3 times 4 times y and then we write back the base which is x and then we add the powers so we have 2 plus 1 and our final answer would be 12 3 times 4 12 and we put the x because the x came before the y here we just put back the x before 2 plus 1 3 and that would be the answer Let's do a division question. So say we have 8a raised to the 5th power divided by 2a raised to the 3rd power. Remember now from the laws, when we have the same base, what we do, we would subtract the powers. So now we have both base being a. So what we do, we divide the coefficient as normal. So 8 divided by 2 would give us a 4 and a raised to the power of 5 minus 3 giving us 4a squared for our final answer. For our next division question say we have 7a raised to the 5th power divided by 3a raised to the 2nd power. So first thing we'll do as we did before we we'll divide the coefficient. So we'll have 7 divided by 3 a, which is the base, raised to the power of 5 minus 2, which would be 7 over 3. A raised to the third power for the final answer. We'll say we are given 5x squared y cubed and all of that is raised to the power of 2. What would we do here? Well, 
we would square everything inside the bracket. So we'd square the coefficient as well. So 5 squared would be 25. Then the x squared, because x squared squared would be multiplying this 2 by this 2, giving us x raised to the power. Let me use this red one. Raised to the power of 4, 2 times 2, 4. And then y raised to the power of 3 times 2, 6. Now say you are given a cube root of 8x raised to the power of say 2. What you would do based on this rule here, you would rewrite this where in this case 3 would be the n, a would be the, the x and m would be the 2. The 8 is just a coefficient multiplying the base. So we would write it as this, 8x raised to the power of 2 thirds. Now let's get into some thirds. Thirds has some laws of its own and some laws that are shared with laws of indices. So first rule raised to the power of n is equal to a. This is the same as saying the square root of 2 all squared. Now, if you have a squared, it is a times a. So the same thing go, goes here. Root 2 times root 2. And there's a next property of third where root a times root b. You can rewrite this as root a b. So with this, I can rewrite this this to be root 2 times 2 which is root 4 which is equal to 2. So you can see that this here is proven. If I have a root, whatever root it is, if, if it is raised to the power of the root then you will get what is underneath the root. The same thing goes if I have the q root of 8. If I have even have the, the 3 here, remember now from indices you could rewrite this as 8 raised to the power of 3 over 3 which is equal to 8 raised to the power of 1 which is equal to 8. So the same thing goes here again. Rule 2. If you have a root a times root b is the same as having root a times b. If I have root a over root b, it is the same thing as having root a over b. Say you are given the square root of 75 and you are told to reduce this to its lowest third. What you do you would try to get a number where you would get a, a whole number for the square root from this. So I know that 75 is 25 plus 25 plus 25, which is the same thing as 25 times 3. From this rule, root a times root b is the same thing as root ab. What we will actually do, we will reverse this to get our reduction. So I will get an A and a B. And I will try to get an A that I can find the square root for. For example, 25. I know that the square root of 25 is 5. So I would have 25 times root. And I know that the square root of 25 would be 5. And then I would have root 3 here. And this would be my final answer. Say I was given root 50 and I, I'm supposed to reduce this to its lowest form. I still can use 25 from before. I know that 25 times 2 gives me 50. So I would have root 25 times root 2. Then I know that root 25 with 5 and root 2 can't be reduced any lower. So I write back root 2 here. And that's how we reduce a third. When adding or subtracting thirds, 
is the same principle as in indices. You can't add unlike third. So the third must be the same. You can't add, for example, a plus root b. Both third must have the same thing underneath them. So you, if you have root a plus root a, you would end up having 2 root a. Say we're given two thirds to add. 4 root 72 plus root 32. To add two thirds, they must be the same, meaning they must have the same number under the root. So what I would have to do to add these thirds, I'd have to reduce them until I have the same number beneath them. Now, I know if I multiply 36 by 2, I will get 72. And if I multiply 16 by 2, I will get 32. And that is how we will reduce. We'll write back 4 as the coefficient. So 4 root 36 times 2 plus root 16 times 2. And as before, we saw that we can split the roots. Root A, root B is equal to root A, B. So what we have here is root A, B. So we will reverse root A, B, split it into two separate roots. So I will go and I will write 4 root 36 times root 2 plus root 16 times root 2. Now we have root 2 here and here. I know that the square root of 36 would give me 6, so I would have 4 times 6 times root 2 plus 4 times root 2. Now I'll go ahead and multiply this, giving me 24 times root 2 plus 4 times root 2. Now that I have similar roots, what I will do now is add both. So this is now the same thing as 24x plus 4x, which is 28x. So we will treat root 2 as x, giving us 28 root 2 for our final answer. If you are subtracting 2 third, you would do the same thing. The only difference would be a minus sign here. So you would have 20 root 2 if you were to do the same question. Now let me do an example with a subtraction to show you guys. So, so say I was given 7 cube root of 128 minus 3 cube root of 16. Notice that when you are subtracting, you have the same root because you can't subtract different roots. And you must have the same thing beneath the roots. So let's go ahead and reduce this. I can reduce this to 16 times 8. So I can have 7 cube root of 16 times 8 minus 3 cube root of 16. Now I have 2 roots with 16. But let me split this into, into 2 roots first. So 7 cube root of 16 times root 8 and that would be a cube root as well minus 3 cube root of 16 the cube root of 8 will be 2 so 7 times cube root of 16 times 2 minus 3 times the cube root of 16 now I multi can multiply this by the 7 in front, giving me 14 cube root of 16 minus 3 cube root of 16. And my answer, if I subtract this, would be 11 cube root of 16. Now you may want to stop at this answer, but it's always best to simplify it. To the simplest form this can be simplified again so 11 cube root of now i know that 16 is 
8 times 2 and I can split this into two different roots giving me 11 cube root of 2 times cube root 8 and again the cube root of 8 is 2 so 11 cube root of 2 times 2 giving me 22 cube root of 2 and this would be my final answer both of these are correct but it's always best to carry your answer in its simplest form say you were given this question root 7 times root 3 what would you do well if you recall this root a times root b is the same thing as root a b so if i go ahead and multiply the 7 by the 3 i get root 21. say root 21 divided by root 3 if you recall the rule root a over root b is the same thing as root a over b so I would have root 21 divided by root 3, which would give me 7 for my final answer. So please remember these because these are what you will use for simplifying. Now let's get into some logarithms. Say you have log this 3, 1 over 27 equal to x. And you want to find the value of x. You kind of do this where you have the base raised to this. The base is here. The power is here. And this is what it's equal to. So you will always have whatever base is here raised to the power, which is this. And is equivalent to whatever is here. So 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 1 over 27. Now remember from the laws of indices, this would also be equal to 27 to the minus 1 power. Now what I want to do to find the value of x, I want to get both to have the same base. So here we have a base 3, I want this to be base 3. So Whatever power this is will be the power here. I know that 3 cubed is 27, but this is 27 raised to the minus 1. So I will have 27 raised to the minus 3. So 3x is equivalent to 3 raised to the minus 3. And since this is true, then x must be equal to minus 3. For our next example, say I have log base 4, 8 equal to x. Same thing goes. I'll rewrite it in its exponential form. So I would have 4 raised to the power of x equal 8. Now, I want to have both having the same base. How would I go about doing that? Well, I could have 4 here. What power can you raise 4 to? To get 8. Well you can't do that so what you would have to do is reduce them to a number that you can raise them to a power and they would have the same base. So say 2. I know that 2 raised to the power of 2 is the same thing as 4 and 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed. Right? And from the laws of indices, I can multiply this. So I would have 2 raised to the power of 2x equal 2 cubed. Now we have the same base for both. So we can drop the bases and have them equal to 2x equal 3. And from here, we can solve for x by dividing both sides by 2. So x is equal to 3 over 2 which is equal to 1.5 as a decimal say i have log base 4 x minus 2 equals 3 
well the same thing goes here again i will raise the base to this power so in its exponential form it's 4 cubed equal to x minus 2 and this one is very simple since x is already here all i need to do is solve for x so i transpose by adding 2 to both sides so x is equal to no 2 plus 4 cubed which it be equal to 2 plus 2 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 again 64 and 64 plus 2 would be equal to 68 so my final answer would be 66 now say i was given this log base x plus 127 equals 3 now the same thing goes again the base raised to the power equal the value that's here so x plus 1 which is the base raised to the power 3 equal to 27 so in this example what i do i'll try to get both to have the same power because i can't get a x here i can't do anything to get the, the base 27 to have anything in common with this so i will try to get the same power for both now this is raised to the power of 3 and i can get this to be raised to the power of 3 so i can have x plus 1 raised to the third power is equal to 3 raised to the third power now since this is true then this would also be true now i can simply solve for the x here by subtracting one on both sides giving me x to be x equals 3 minus 1 x equals 2 for my final answer and that's it guys thank you for watching took a swing at a wrecking ball and